Hi, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. So today is part two of the build of the Dornier DS17, the 2022 release in 172nd from FX. It's day two. It's the second and concluding part. The first part is already up on the channel, as is the box opening. Now, if you are thinking about buying this kit and you just want to know what you get for your money, the box opening video is the one you should be looking at first. If you have got one or you've ordered one and you want to see how to put it together, then the part one and part two of the build are very much the videos for you. Now, if you like them, please do let me know by giving them the Imperial thumbs up on the like button below. And if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything, helps me enormously. All you have to do is click on that small button down there in the bottom right corner. If you set the alarm bell to go as well, it will give you notifications of all the new videos I put up as they arrive. And as usual, if you would like to give a bit more concrete support, you can do that through maybe Super Thanks if you like, or any of my partner programs. All of the information on those is in the information box below. So um, at the end of part one, we had the kit mainly built, most of the structure built, wings, fuselage, da 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 da, and we were ready to start painting. And that's where we're gonna pick up the story. So for the underside, we have RLM 65 light blue. The main wheels, as so often is the case, come in two halves. They just go together like that. Then you can clamp them and just run a bead of extra thin cement around them. This will also help reduce the appearance of the seam. And, but we'll still probably sand it down a little bit when it's dry. The same for the larger bombs as well. I guess they're I know they don't don't look like thousand pounders equivalent, but that would be what four hundred and fifty four kilos. Maybe these are like two hundred and fifty kilo bombs. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to just run some extra thin cement around these. I'm only using one, one of the big bombs and then I'll use a rack of the smaller bombs as well. Just to show you how they both all go in. I'm going to get the propellers done as well <clears throat> while I can and I can paint them up. The propellers on, on one of the blades you can see there's just this little extra notch there and that sits into this notch on the back plate. Okay, that sort of keeps it lined up. That's the theory. There you go. I don't know if you can just see the extra notch and it sits into the hole in the back plate. Then the spinner goes over the top. And that's that the bombs get a coat of black green RLM 70 RLM 70 now the small bombs I've just cut off the sprue on the underside part and sanded that down because now it's going to see the top part and this just makes it a lot easier to spray them with the uh, RLM 70 black green again. The propellers also get the same RLM black green. The centre of the wheels, as on a lot of German planes, was black. Now this is where using a, a tyre black 
for the rubber itself is going to look so much better because you'll get the differentiation between the black at the middle and the black on the outside if you just go with the fx one you'll have um black 33 and black 85 is it matte black and satin coal black is all the difference you're going to get whereas actually rubber isn't completely black we'll sh we'll see this later and when the black is dry you can just paint on the dark rubber for the tires and you can see straight away there's quite a difference now when these dry it won't be so bad but for the moment there's quite a difference also I'm going to load up these smaller bombs onto the racks first there are five on each side so ten bombs in all if you're using the whole plane full of them of course there's 20 which is quite a lot of little bombs I'm guessing they're incendiaries I don't know for sure they just seem small bombs otherwise so I'm guessing these are incendiaries a bit like um, actually what the RF used to do you used to drop um, high explosive rounds to sort of break down places and block streets and whatever and then um, the incendiaries just to set fire to everything that was the way of war in the 20th century there we go just do that for the other side of the aircraft now and the first colour that goes on the top is this RLM 71 dark green then you can tape off the dark green and apply the black green as well bomb racks sit on these little l-shaped tabs in right in the middle of the bomb bay there they sit in those and then between these two small pegs here on the side of the fuselage the big bomb has to sit on its mounting first like this then when that's ready that can go into the bomb bay okay the flaps have got <coughs> uh, these four notches that they sit in and if you're using one of the larger bombs it sits on its carriage and then there's a kind of a recess on the bomb base here for it and there one there there you go it sits there I'm going to make a start on the decals while um, I've got this upside down I don't really want to be doing it after I've installed the undercarriage and stuff like that it'll be a bit too delicate so I'll do that now First of all, we go on with some decal setting solution. I'm using Microset here in this uh, Derwent brush, this sort of watercolour brush, a refillable watercolour brush. It's a really useful thing to do. Then we get our decal and we take off excess water from it because it's been sitting in a dish and we double check the placement again okay and so it goes right on here 
in the middle of this with the black of the bars, outer bars there in the middle there. Okay, so it's going to go in the middle of this panel. See this panel here in the middle of that and lined up with the black there. Is that nice? That's kind of it, right? So about there. Yeah, okay, so you can see we've got either side of the it's roughly equal here. And the black of this outer line just sits under the panel line here and above the panel line there, and that is pretty much it. So I'll just take some of the excess water off. I'm going to let that sit for a little bit just to um, settle down. But I will, while I'm here, put on another bit of equal set just to start softening it because there's some uh, panels here. I'm going to want this to sit in. So there we go. So just let that, that settle in now. And then just go around the whole of the bottom of the plane doing the same thing. There's this one decal here, uh, which is number uh, 52. And it's supposed to go across the bottom of the fuselage here. It's supposed to run right up against the back of the bomb bay there. And against the back of this little hatch as well. Um, if you do that, it doesn't quite reach the ends. So I am going to make the assumption that it's in the right place but too short because to make it long enough, I've got to move it back to about here. And that definitely is not where the instructions say it should be. So I'm sort of kind of conflicted. It meets, meets up with another decal on the top. So maybe if I fit that and then see where this, this meets up, I don't know. It's not entirely clear. Also, the other problem is, well, it's not a problem because I think I've solved it, but um, here's the decal here. I'm talking about 52. Okay, it goes up to the base of the uh, engine, the, the, sorry, the training edge of the wing fillet here then on the top this says it becomes number 51 well number 51 is also this um, that I think should be 53 now th this stuff should be really kind of proofread I think but that I'm sure this is number 53 because that's a straight yellow line 51 is indeed this on the actual decal sheet so a bit of a misprint there I'll, I'll try and fit this one first on the top see where it leads me and see whether I can then get 52 as it says here 52 to meet up with it right that's where the top yellow line goes um, pretty much that's where it fits anyway so what I'm going to do now is compare that with the bottom and indeed it's nowhere near it. So I'm going to move the bottom yellow line back and just assume that they got the placing on the decals wrong. Right so there we have it that's where the yellow band is going it works it fits and that's where it's staying. The twin fins go together very easy with a rudder just rudder just sticks on the back like that simple as that now the undercarriage um, this this first piece goes in it slots down into the gap at the bottom and then four there's two like little slots at the front there and it sits in there we'll just hold that in place for a moment for it to grab
and for the actuator I don't know if you can see just just down there there's like a little post that's got a notch in it that this um, part here sits in that notch this bit sits into that notch that up and then these two arms sit in the back of the legs here let's see if we can do that Push that into place. There we go. That's nicely seated. And then, uh, I mean, they f should form quite a solid thing, really. There's lots of triangles there, and triangles tend to be quite solid. But um, it does look very spindly. But I'm sure it is. I'm sure it's grand. I'm sure it's grand. The tail wheel just slots into a hole in the back there okay like that the bombay doors have three pegs a smaller one at each end and a longer one in the middle that sits on the inside of the bombay to hold it in place the undercarriage doors hook around the bottom of the nacelle and sit upright like so. While all those bits are setting, what I'm gonna do now is um, take off the mask here and maybe put the gun in place. I need a bit of a sharper stick. So just take off this this mask here. Well, there's several, isn't there? There's about three or four masks on there. And I just made the hole in the perspex just a little bit bigger because um, once these are painted, they won't go through the original hole. So I just drilled it out a tiny, tiny bit bigger, and then it pops through. So we go. Uh, there we go. Pops through under there, and what I'll do is I'll put just the tiniest drop of extra thin cement on that, just to keep it in place. So I've had to do the same thing on the um, these oh, on a Boeing. They'd be waste gunners on the, the sort of back of the the side guns on the on the back of the. Um, cockpit area just drilled it out a little bit and still really I might have to drill it out even more just a tiny bit more because they are really really stiff then I add the main canopy and I've taken all of the masking tape off as you can see and I have put in guns fore and aft and that just sits nicely into place. It's actually really nicely designed. And the front glass is the same. You put the uh, gun in and then we offer up uh, the glass. Now what I've done is I've used white PVA on this and I'll just uh, make sure it's all lined up properly. There we go, very nice. That's looking like a Dornier 17 now. Right now these uh, splash guards, mud guards if you will, whatever you like to call them, uh, they sit between the main suspension arms there and then just sort of snuggle down onto those cross members. And that's what keeps them in place, okay? So they sit in there we put a dash of ultra thin or extra thin, call it what you will. There we go, on either side just to hold it in place. And that's that done. 
and at this time we can also put in the wheels now we're not going to glue them because they have got flat spots and they will turn whilst they're in here and then when when we're ready we can put them on the prop wheels properly arrange the flat spot so it sits perfectly then just extra thin cement in place there's also this crew access door to go in it just sort of hooks in there now what I've um, I've already done the uh, decal there's a, a decal I think it says danger don't go any further backwards than this or something like that I don't know I don't know what it actually says but it's not going in the slot as it should there you go I think that's that's it there we go so that sits there very nice we'll just make sure it's yep it is lined up properly yep cool that's the access door done I hope you can see that now. See now, now it's on the flat. We can just rotate that tire until it's sitting on the flat spot like that. Then a dab of extra thin cement on the axles, and they'll be set in place permanently. On the top surface here, I'm just dabbing some powder, some weathering powder. This one's called smoke. And it's just kind of flowing back from the exhausts. Um, I think it looks pretty cool. Um, I you know, might might add a bit of black to it, might be a bit brown to it, maybe something like that. I don't know, might might not add anything to it. I think it might look quite good as it is. Just to give a, a an indication of that's where the smoke, the exhaust from the these big old engines go. Then there's a few aerials that need to go on. Like the uh, circular DF aerial there and this radio mast here. Now for the propeller, there's a propeller stub, drive axe, whatever, it goes through this collar. Then the propeller assembly goes on the front. And the idea is that if you want to, you don't um, glue this in, then you can turn the propeller, but I'm not worried about that. My propeller's not going anywhere. So just to the other one now. Then the propeller just simply sits into the front of the engine like so. And then my very last job of all is to attach the fins vertical stabilizers if you prefer and with this my Dornier DO17Z is completed so there we have it the Dornier DO17Z in one seventy second from FX what a nice kit it's quite a complex build if you're new to model making this might not be a good idea to uh, go onto this one that quickly it earns its level three skill level three badge i have to say but when you get all the parts together and get it all painted up it's a very beautiful model of the dornia 17 the interior detail is very good the parts actually go together in the main pretty well and it's a uh, an enjoyable build a rewarding build when you get it and it looks nice it's actually really really rewarding i enjoyed making this i hope you do too and so there it is the dornia do 17 in 172nd from airfix a lovely kit to build little frustrating at times one or two problems i really could have done without um, but the detail, especially in the cockpit area, is astonishing. And it looks great when it's finished. Um, really, really, really do suggest you get a canopy mask, though. Um, there are plenty available. Um, Edouard do them. Peewit do them. There's going to be plenty around because it is a proper greenhouse at the front end of this plane. That's pretty much it, then. Thank you so much for watching. If you've liked it, 
imperial thumbs up please and do subscribe if you haven't done so already to my channel to get notifications of new builds and check out the back catalogue as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. <music>